Wait, hold the phone. A Disney live action remake that's actually good? Everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for clicking on this video and today I am going to be reviewing the 2023 Little Mermaid movie and I'm gonna start off by saying this. I am not a very big fan of the original one from I think it's 1989. I respect it. It's legacy. I know it is one of the first in the Disney. Dis I believe it actually was the first in the Disney Renaissance. I do respect it. It doesn't mean I enjoy the film. This one, I will. We will get to my thoughts in a second, but I will say I will. I'm trying to uh, take this on its own terms. I'm not trying to compare it as much, but we'll start, and we're going to start by talking about the good, <laughs> and the best thing yet to mention here is Halle Bailey as Ariel. And at first, there was a lot of controversy about her. I'm not here to address that. I find that it's extremely terrible for people to just uh say the film was awful because of Halle Bailey in the role she is a way better Ariel in my opinion I think that I never found the acting from uh the original uh the whoever plays Bar Ariel in the original her acting is nowhere near as good as Halle Bailey she fully commits her voice is beautiful she is absolutely on fire in this film she killed it I will I am not afraid to say that and I will say, I always, um, something that I will always say that I respect is that even though I will, I know I'm going to be called out for this one, I'm going to say, I know a lot of people do not like the Lion King 2019 remake. I do. But here's what I'm going to call out on the Lion King 2019 remake. If there's one thing that film can be accused of is that it is basically a shot for shot remake of the original film, uh, except with photorealistic lions. It is basically the same film just um it just looks realistic and so it has nothing to offer so by comparison it's not as good and i will so it's basically a copy and cut and paste this one i i know a lot of people have been complaining about some of the things they do i think i really respect the fact that they did they did creative decisions like they made the bird a different gender i didn't really agree with that part but they still made some creative decisions on certain other on certain other aspects that I enjoyed. Wild Uncharted Waters that they added as a song, I really enjoyed. I love that one. So I enjoy that this one tried to separate itself from the re from the uh, animated one by trying to do its own thing, and it tried its hardest to not be a complete copy and paste, meaning it did other things different. So and I enjoyed that part about it. That it tried not to do what Lion King did and just completely reboot uh, the original. Just it's now photorealistic. Basically the same thing with Little Mermaid. It's not photorealist. Sorry, it is photorealistic. I mean, it didn't try and just be a copy and paste remake, which I respect. That it didn't try and do that. Another thing you have to mention is uh, Melissa McCarthy as Ursula. She was a scene stealer. I thought that she was really fun. You could tell she was chewing up every scene she was in, that she was having a ton of fun. She is by far the standout of this film, and I find that some of the humor does land. It doesn't land every time. There's some jokes that they try and throw at you that are iffy, and I find that around the part where Ariel loses her voice, that's mostly the part in both the movie version and the uh, the movie version of the uh, animated one and this one where it slows down. And I'm not that big a fan of it, and I think, but I do think the acting is pretty good in here, and I think that the person that plays, uh, what's his face? Yeah, sorry. I, again, not a, I've not seen the original one in a long time. Don't expect me to remember every guy's name, and I haven't seen this one in like a, maybe I saw it like a week ago, like a week or two. Yeah, I didn't know it was like a week ago, so... I can't, I don't have too good, I've been watching a lot of things, like, I've been trying to watch a lot of action movies lately for several different rankings, don't judge me. But anyway, uh, whatever his name is, Ariel's, uh, catch, no pun intended, uh, I think he also does really good in it, and I really do enjoy him. As far as the negatives, uh, the negatives, I will say, 
uh, there's some things like the bird kind of got on my nerves at times. It felt like she was just, I mean, I like the actress playing her, uh, playing the bird. Uh, I've always found her to be a really funny actress at times. It's just that this, it feels like they're intentionally trying to throw it and shove it down your throat. And I'm not a fan of that. They should have stuck with, uh, the bird being a boy. I can't remember his name. Don't need to. I, I don't need to remember every detail about this. That's only for things like Die Hard, which I need to remember every detail about, or films of my top ten of all time. Uh, and there's some characters that I feel like are underutilized, especially that, like, little fish, that, uh, Flounder, maybe, I think is the name. Um, and I will say, uh, probably the biggest negative is the underwater effects. Some look good. But some look pretty terrible. If you take a look, if you haven't rewatched this film in a while, you may forget. Taking a look at the cinematography in the water, it looks absolutely awful. Some of the shots, I have no idea why, what they lit it with, what they did, but it looks so fake. I have no idea how you can make something and it looks this terrible. And I'm not a fan of that. They went so green screen with it and it looks... This is a time and era where I'm just getting super super annoyed with the fact that people have to use green screen. Like, take The Flash, for example. That film was bloated with CGI. And I was, and I, that's another reason I took a look at The Flash. I said, why is the CGI so terrible? And then I found the director, who's Andy Muschietti, who, if you do not know, did It, Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, the uh, films about a killer clown. And I was like, oh, yep, that explains it. Yep, that explains all of it. And if you don't, and if you don't uh, know why I'm th uh, cracking on it now because of Flash, take a look at the opening scene of the first one. You will see what I mean. And um, so I would say that the underwater effects are by far what hold this film back the most. So that's mostly just my negatives of the film. It's not a complete hit. It's not like the one of the greatest uh, films of all time. Like. I'll, Actually, very few people would claim it to be that. I, there are probably a few, but I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to go out on a limb here like something like Spider-Man and Across the Spider-Verse, which, to note, do not deserve any of that love it gets. I'm still harping on that film, believe me. Uh, but a lot of people consider it one of the greatest films of all time. I don't, because it isn't. Um, but I will say, this is not one of those films that people are just going to be talking about for, like, the next few decades is, like, the greatest cinematic achievement since... Uh, oh, great. I just put myself on the spot. Like, Top Gun Maverick, because that is a cinematic masterpiece, let's be honest. But I would say that it's really... I would say it's really good, and I think, uh, who's the guy? Uh, uh, the guy that plays Ariel's dad, uh, can't remember his name. He plays in Skyfall. I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna see it in a... possibly in a few days. God. I can't remember his name. All I know is he. I think he's really good. So I I really think that he he's one of my favorite parts about the film. I think that he I've always enjoyed him in whatever I've seen him in. I mean he was one of my favorite parts about Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, and ironic fact this was actually done by the same director as on uh, as the person that directed this also directed Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. So this was not my first film I watched with him. I had seen on Stranger Tides, so I was. I did not have the best introduction to him. We'll just say that because that film was not good at all. It is absolutely terrible. So, yeah, all in all, guys, I pretty I actually had a pretty good time with this film. I on Letterboxd I gave it a four out of five, uh, so four stars and a heart, which is what I usually give a uh, four star. If I give it four stars, it means that I also give it a heart, and uh, you also get Rambo: First Blood Part Two and Three, which are three and a half. But I love that Rambo. I love the franchise of Rambo, so I gave it a heart anyway sue me and but anyway guys i enjoyed this film a lot so i would definitely recommend this film to you and if you're one of the people that stayed away from the film because of the controversy because of things like Halle bailey do not listen to that at all i have no idea why people are still harping on that people on the internet will do anything these days to try and make themselves heard and to get more followers so do not listen to anyone on the internet just watch the film and see what you think. It's on Disney Plus uh, because it was made by Disney. It should be. So uh, I would highly recommend giving this a watch. You can. You don't really have to buy it. Just if you have Disney Plus, just stream it through there. But if you are a big fan of the Little Mermaid from the uh, the animated one, I am not. But if you are, this might be a very worthy reimagining of the film. So I would highly suggest checking it out for your spell self. Sorry. 
I mean, I, sorry, I had surgery, uh, getting my wisdom teeth removed, and I am now somehow stuttering even more than usual, which, believe me, is something, because I stutter quite a bit. You guys would know this. But uh, all in all, guys, really enjoy this film. Make sure to check it out. If you really enjoy the animated Little Mermaid, I would actually say if you were a runner risk it, you could actually buy this film. I mean, if it's on sale, that's probably a better idea than if it's like 20 bucks, which thanks a lot, 2023, 20, where basically everything nowadays is 2020. 20, hey, sorry, is 20 bucks. Been trying to find a way to get Logan, but it keeps getting up to like 20 bucks. Because believe me, I love Logan. But I'm a very cheap guy. I want to. I want things that are on sale. So yeah, I will self roast myself like that. But anyway, guys, I really enjoyed this film. So make sure to check it out and stay tuned for my ranking of every movie I saw in 2023 as soon as I can get the time to get it out. As well as the fact I will be getting a. Let's count this off on, on my fingers. You will not see me this, but I will. I'm gonna try and get a Lethal Weapon ranking out. I've already seen all the films, so Lethal Weapon ranking coming. Equalizer ranking coming, Predator ranking coming, possibly an Alien ranking coming. I think that's it. I think I'm forgetting one. Uh, oh, Roger Moore ranking coming, possibly a uh, a Timothy Dalton versus episode coming, Pierce Brosnan ranking coming, and a um, uh, Daniel Craig James Bond ranking coming, and then possibly a every single James Bond movie ranked which is gonna be a big one that's like 30 because yet there are 25 movies that are canon but i'll throw in never say never again because i really want to insult that film so make that 26 so anyway guys thank you all so much for watching make sure to stream the little mermaid check it out for yourself see what you guys think and stay stay tuned again dang it man these man the surgery has really been taking a toll on my effect of talking but anyway guys Make sure to check out The Little Mermaid if you enjoy the cartoon or if you're just curious. And if you guys want to see where this place is on my uh, on my end of year list, then make sure to stay tuned for that ranking coming soon. Thank you all so much for watching and have a good one.